I grew up watching my mother sew. I remember her taking over the dining room table, sometimes for days at a time, working on various projects for our family or to sell to others. We were pretty poor when I was young, and she often made summer clothes for my sister and me. I was always embarrassed though because we often shopped at thrift stores too, and it meant I never dressed like the other kids at school. So I was made fun of a lot. My thick glasses didn't help. So I never really thought I would be interested in sewing, especially as a man who was supposed to be interested in sports or mechanics. But then again, I was never normal. The thing that really started me down this path was a visit to Landis Valley Museum in Lancaster, Pennsylvania in about 2009. In one of the buildings, they had this huge antique floor loom set up with a long warp of linen fabric and a historical reenactor weaving along while tourists paraded through the room. When I read the exhibit guide and heard the descriptions about early pioneers growing and processing flax right out of the ground and then making their own fabric, I was fascinated. I told my wife, one day I want to do that too. I think she just thought I was crazy though. Fast forward 12 years, toward the end of the pandemic closures, and we were all getting a bit stir crazy. I thought, I'm gonna look into weaving again and see if it's something I could learn to do on my own. So I just started reading as much as I could, and bought some other recommended books online. But I also learned by seeing and doing, so what really cemented it for me was watching YouTube videos and eventually watching videos on Jane Stafford's School of Weaving and similar channels. One channel I learned a lot from was Curmudgeon66, this retiree from Wisconsin named Andy who just putzes around weaving things in one of his many looms. He got me interested in tweed scarves and after seeing his Ashford table loom in action, I convinced my mother to forego my gifts that year and buy me one as an early Christmas present. Once I got a hold of that, I didn't look back. I immediately made a couple dozen wool scarves and gave my parents the first two as gifts. Then I moved on to dish towels and then fabric. I'm currently obsessed with replicating Harris tweed as closely as I can using my own patterns and thread. That was about when I started thinking about what to do with all the fabric I was going to make. And down the rabbit hole I went. I saw that my wife's sewing machine hadn't been used in a while. So I thought, I'm going to dust that thing off and try to learn to sew as well. I figured I'd seen enough of my mother's sewing to remember the basics and I would fill the rest in with YouTube, Facebook, and other online resources, just like I had with weaving. There was a bit more of a learning curve, but I was soon sewing some basic projects. Then I rediscovered a series of OG homesteading shows on Amazon Prime called Tales from the Green Valley, a docu-series of historical farming practices filmed between 2005 and 2013 with British historians Ruth Goodman, Peter Ginn, Alex Langlands, and Tom Pinfold. Together, they spent several years living as farmers did in different eras of British history, Victorian, Edwardian, World War II, and even Tudor times. I especially enjoyed the Edwardian farm and wartime farm episodes because of the connection to the early 20th century and its pre-electric and gas methods of farming, especially the fashion, which they took great pains to replicate. Eventually, that series led me through a progression of period sources, and I started following several vintage clothing YouTubers and Facebook pages, including The Gentleman's Gazette and the Victorian and Edwardian Sewing Group on Facebook. It was all over for me, though, once I discovered Vintage Bursha and his co-written book, Sewing Vintage Menswear, and I started watching Bernadette Banner, Samantha Snow, and other YouTubers. Then I found black snail patterns, an amazing vintage source out of Germany, and things got really crazy. So far I've made almost a dozen vintage 1920s flat caps, a vest, ties, 
and I'm well into vintage pants, shirts, collars, and a men's 1890 lounge jacket, which I think will be a significant challenge indeed. Meanwhile, I'm finding myself being sucked into the strange new world of history bounding and becoming a bit of a wool tweed snob. I especially like Harris tweed. I am by no means an expert on any of this, but my family and I are having fun and I'm learning some pretty useful new skills. I even won fourth place at the California State Fair for one of my latest wool scarves. But what I'm really hoping for in all this is the opportunity to share this adventure with others and to build a sense of community around a unique shared interest, part of our broader quest for home and self-reliance in an age where few people do things like this for themselves or even think they're capable of learning such skills anymore. But I'm living proof that you can pick these skills up in a short amount of time and start making things you never dreamed you could make, whether it's vintage fashion, homemade clothing, or anything else you're interested in. And as this video shows, you can make ties in an evening, vests in a weekend, shirts and pants, jackets, things that will make people say, wow, I can't believe you made that and you might even get some recognition somewhere along the way. We hope you've enjoyed this episode of The Roaming Homesteaders. If you like our channel, please subscribe and hit the bell so that you're notified when we release new videos. And as always, thanks for watching. Bye.